victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your words, because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart. His gratefulness Say, say praise the Lord his gratefulness his gratefulness flowing 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 is flowing his gratefulness his gratefulness flowing 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 in my heart his gratefulness I can count the many times that God has been gracious to me on one hand, but on the other hand, I cannot even count them. His gratefulness, his gratefulness flowing through my heart, just gratefulness. Lord, I love you. I love you. I just love you, Lord. Praise God. That just gets in my spirit. Hmm. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Amen. Lord, gracious God, we just come this day and this hour to give you glory and to thank you for allowing us to come into this house that you are yet present in, oh God. We have yet urged you in to come in and bless us and give us strength and encourage us. We yet urged you in, God, to just have your way and move by your power. Not I, but it's you, God, that get the glory. God, bless our souls, bless our minds. Feed us that, God, that we will have a word from you that will bless our minds. Feed us, oh God, with that word to guide us and enlighten us. God, continue to give us the strength that we need and encourage in our hearts, God, as we go through these troubled and trying times. Lord, we just say thank you because we love you. We thank you because thou art God. Your amazing grace, your, un your unfailing love, God. You are just loving kindness and your tender mercy. We love you, God. Have your way in the service. Bless us in the right mind and spirit. Bind the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. 
We forever give you glory. And we thank you for this hour in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. And amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. Amen. Amen. Do honor the bishop of this very house, the shepherd of his flock. Thank God for those who are listening, those on the radio or streaming on live. We just thank God for our bishop and the shepherd of this house. Praise God. All the ministers, my wife. Praise God, all the saints of God that are yet here today. And we are yet here to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. But before I do anything else, I want some believers in this house. I want some believers in this house. I want you to lift up your hand and tell the Lord just to bless our bishop. Strengthen him right now. Strengthen that family. I need all believers just to magnify and praise God. The trust in God that he'll do a great work. I just want you to thank God for what he had already done and for what he's about to do. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Bless him, God. Bless his home. Bless him, God. Let your presence be filled. Mighty God. Saving God. Holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. Woo, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. Hallelujah. I come to magnify God today, amen. Praise be unto God. I come to give him glory. I just come to magnify him. No matter what's going on in my life, I'm coming to magnify God. Praise be unto God. Praise God. Amen. I got a few scriptures here. I was up for a few minutes trying to get something together, but God is an awesome God. No matter where I turn in the Bible, he just still showed me he's awesome. If you're trying to find out if he's good or not, just open your Bible. You'll see that he is good and he's awesome. You find something to fit your situation that you're in, open your Bible. God will say, I'm still here. I'm still awesome. Wherever you look into the word of God, God say, you are delivered, you healed, you set free. Wherever you look, no matter where you're at in the Bible, you just look in there, you'll see that you are free and you have been delivered. It don't look like, don't feel like, it don't even think you're going to be free. But God said, open up my word and you'll see your healing right there. I trust in God, whatever he got for me. I open my word up and say, you free, yeah, you free, you free. God not going to let his people be in captivity. He's not going to let you be put ashamed. Because he's God. He's God all by himself. Praise be unto God. Amen. Amen. I just thank God. I thank God. Amen. Amen. For what we're going through and what we're going to come out of. Praise be unto God. I haven't walked on water yet, but I know a man in the Bible said that God called me and told me, come unto me. The man kept his eyes on the Lord and he came unto him because he had faith and trust in God. Praise be unto God. I ain't walk yet, but I'm going I'm to fly. I ain't walked no while, but I'm going to fly without an airplane. I'm going to do it. Because God going to call me home. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise be unto God. Amen. If you will, gather your word with me for this morning. Amen. I love my bishop and first lady. I love them. I truly love my bishop and my first lady. Praise God. They have labored long and hard for these sheep. And they have watched over us long and hard. I love them. Praise God. I love them. I can't wait until he get back up here and give his word to his people. Praise be unto God. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Praise God. I got a few scriptures here I'm going to try to get to this morning. Amen. Amen. And I'm trying to put them together, but we're going to work with what we got. Amen. Praise God. This is a time now which we are yet going through. We just don't know. These are times we've never seen before. Things are going astray. We don't know what's going to happen. Everywhere we look, there's something going on. We, 
one minute the people say this, the next they'll say that. You know, they don't know what's going on. I'm talking about not on this world, but in, even in your very life, in your home, wherever you may be. It's always an adversary. It's always what if and why. It's always, I don't know, it's always a situation to put you down. It's always something to try to dig a ditch for you to keep you in a hole, amen. But God said, I'm going to bring you out the ditch. I'm going to bring you out the hole. I'm going to set you on some solid ground. Praise be to God. But I read the scripture this morning. I was looking at something. I know that the devil is angry at all of God's people. And I looked up a word this morning, and the word was affliction. The word was affliction. There was affliction. It means a cause of persistent pain or distress or suffering. We're in a time now we are being afflicted. We are persistently caused a lot of problems. We are in a lot of pain. We are a lot of distress. Things going on already. We just don't know what's going to happen. We, we're trying to we go to this place and something else happened. We, we go over here, something else happened. We're trying to find some peace. But everywhere we turn, there's, there's always, we've been afflicted. We've been afflicted in our bodies. We've been afflicted where we can't even, we, we try to sit up and we hurt. We have pain. We, we read our Bible and we can't, we say we can't read because it's something tormenting your mind. The devil is trying to block you, your mind, from reading God's word. But it's a whole lot going on. Affliction doesn't necessarily mean just pain or physical. It's a pain that's going to be even in your absolute, your spirit. Because the devil tried to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to do everything that he can possibly to take your mind off of Christ. Praise God. But I want to come to tell you today that there's a scripture in the Bible. And the Bible said that God will hear our cry. If you know anything else about the Lord, he said he will hear our cry. Praise be to God. Let me get to that before I can keep on going. Let me get to, if you will, go to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Praise God. God will hear God said his people cry. Praise be unto God. We ain't cried a long time. A whole, a long time. But God will hear our cry. If someone got that for me, please get it for me. Psalm 34, verses 9. If you will, you will. Please, somebody got that because I got to go somewhere else. Please get that for me. Psalms, Psalms, Psalms. Amen. You got it? I'm trying to, I got a few I want to jump to, but I'm, I need a little help this morning if I could. Amen. Praise be unto God. Praise God. Somebody got it? You got it? I'm going to try to turn to it and find it myself. Amen. Psalm, Psalm 34 and 9. It said, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Come down a little bit further. It says that. Start at the 15 verse. It said, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Praise God. And he said, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Now, I like this 17th verse. I like it. I like it. I like it. It said, the righteous cry. And the Lord hear it. And deliver them out of all their trouble. And 18 verse said, the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and say such as be of a contrite Spirit. Now look at the 19th verse. It said, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of all. It said that many, 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 many now, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Just because we're going through something today does not mean that's the only thing you're going to go through. There's many more things that's going to come into your life that's going to put you in a state of being afflicted. But God said, don't worry about it. He said, men are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord said he delivered you out of them all. See, it's one thing about it. We can let the situation in absolutely dictate our attitude. But let me tell you, saints, today, I might be hurting and pain and sick, and, but I'm not going to let that dictate me giving God to glory. So you can let your situation dictate how you will react. You can stay at home. You can be pitiful, make up excuses. But God said, don't let your situation dictate how you give me glory. You want to break through? You want to break out? Magnify and give God some praise. Yeah, I might be in pain, but it's okay. Pain going to come. But pain would not last always. Amen. I can tell you, I'm going to give you some scriptures here. It says Exodus 3, 3rd chapter of Exodus. 3rd chapter of Exodus. You got, if you don't have it, I'll read it for you. Exodus 3rd chapter. Start the first seven verse. And the Lord said, I have surely seen your affliction. 
I've seen it, Israel. I've seen it, children. I've seen it for over 400 years. I know they've been whooping you. I know you go to work and you're tired of getting beat up at your job. I know you're tired of people talking about you. You're at home and you just can't find any peace. I know what's going on. I see everything that's going on. The Lord told the children, he said, and, and the Lord said, I've seen, surely seen your, the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. You think God don't see what's going on in your life. You think God don't see what the people are doing to you while you're at your home. You think God don't see what they're doing to you at your job. But God said, don't let that situation dictate you giving me glory. See, a lot of times things get in our life and we can't magnify God because of the fact the situation has got us bound. We're trying to handle everything except for go to God in prayer. We didn't get comfortable in a state saying it's all right, but no, it's not all right. When somebody is whooping up on your child, you want to go and give your child some help. Say, stop beating up my child. I'm the father. I'm the mom. But God said, wait a minute, wait a minute, devil. Take your hands off my children. They are not yours anyway. They belong unto God. Praise be to God. And he says that uh, which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow. You think you're the only one in pain and sorrow? God said, I know your sorrow. You ain't the only one going through this situation by yourself. And then look at the 17th verse. I got to keep on going. I got to hurry up because I don't want to be too long. 17th verse says, look at it. Say, and I have said it. The Lord said, I said it. I said it. I said it. And I'm not going to keep on repeating it, but I already said it once. This is what I'm going to do for you. I will bring you up out of the way. Praise be to God. The Lord said, I bring you up out of your affliction. He said, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. God not going to keep you in your comfortable state so you can be blessed in prison. God got to get you to a place where you're free. God got to get you to a place where he wants you to be. Yeah, I know we might be comfortable, but God said, that's not where I want you to be. I got a place for you so you can worship and magnify God. That you don't have to get in your closet in the corner to just give God some glory. Where you can just magnify and praise God without being ashamed. Huh? The devil is trying to keep you quiet at your job. You have to pray to God in secret. Huh? You have to get quiet and say, Lord, I thank you. But no, God said, I want you to be free that you can worship me in spirit and in truth. The devil trying to shut your mouth. But God said, I got a plan for you. I'm not going to let you be in Egypt too much longer. I know what's going on everywhere. You think I don't see it? I see what they're doing to you. You go home and you're in pain. You're crying and you're suffering. But God said, hold on, wait a minute. I will bring you deliverance. The Bible said, the Lord said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I didn't tell you to put any vengeance on them or wish ill to them. God said, pray to me and I'll take care of my business. Your business is my business. Hallelujah. We started going through things in life wondering how can I fix it. God said don't worry about it. You are my child. As long as you are my child and abiding by my word I will fight your battles for you. Vengeance is mine said the Lord. You have nothing to do with it because when it come back I don't want you to be in the way. There's nobody or nothing can defeat my God. Cannot do it. The Lord said, wait a minute, don't worship, worship anything bad upon them because the same thing might fall upon you. But if you turn it over to me, let me handle it. Hallelujah. God said, I know what's going on in this world. I have seen and I have heard your cry. I know what they're doing to you. I know what your children are doing. Don't be mad at them, just pray about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48, 48 and 10. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. I'm going to give you these scriptures because I want you to go home and look at them and research and find out where your deliverance is. Praise be unto God. Sometimes we don't read the Bible except when we come to church on Sunday. But I want you to take this home so you can read it on Monday. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. It's not my will, but it's God's will. You, you got Isaiah? You got it? You got it? Praise be unto God. Children of Israel are always murmuring and complaining, but God said, I still got you. 
People always, even in this trying times we're going through right now, they telling us to do everything except for praise God. Praise be unto God. So much fear and gripped every part of the nation. It even came and gripped the church. And God said, wait a minute, wait a minute. This should not be. If I'm freed you before, I'm going to free you again. I gave you a mouth to magnify and give me glory. If you want relief in whatever situation you are in, give me some glory. If you want to be free from whatever situation you're in, give me some glory. If you magnify and praise me, you will see your miracle and your breakthrough coming through. But if you keep your mouth closed and don't magnify me, I can't help you. Praise be unto God. God said he inhabit the praises of his people. Praise be unto God. If you abide in his will, you abide in his word, God will abide in you. Hallelujah. He said, look at this now, but I want to let you all know this. When you do come out, listen to what I'm telling you, that you are going to come out of whatever situation you are in. I know you've been stuck for a long, long time. I know it's been about seven or eight months you've been saying, when are we going to be free? But I want to tell you, saints, today I understand what you are saying, but I'm still yet free because this does not keep me locked up or doesn't keep me quiet. Yes, I'm going to obey what they tell me to obey, but I'm still yet free because God is the head of my life. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let this uh, bound me up from giving God some praise. Uh, somebody asked me and said, hey, Brother Johnson, why are you doing it because the Bible told me to obey uh, the law of the land uh, long as it does su supersede uh, the law of God uh, hallelujah that's not me saying it uh, that's the word of God uh, so I'm going to be free uh, in the midst of a pandemic uh, pandemic doesn't stop me uh, because it does not stop my God uh, hallelujah God said you are free uh, and God said he wants you to be free Hallelujah. This word of God. I want you to come out of this thing. I want you to come out of this. God said, I know you read the story about Daniel, the three Hebrew boys. But let me tell you, saints, today, you in some fire, but God going to bring you out. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. And I'm coming out. I'm going to come out of this uh, even better than I was when I first went in. Uh, reason why I say that because I'm looking at what the devil is trying to do. Uh, the devil trying to close the church's mouth. But what he cannot do is stop God's word. Uh, the Bible let us know that the grass may wither. Uh, everything going to fade away. He said, but my word uh, shall stand forever. Uh, see, I believe God's word. Uh, I don't care what going on. Uh, God said his word is settled. Uh, it shall stand forever. Hallelujah. 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 We go through some things in our life and we don't like it. Nobody like to go through pain. Nobody want to be hurt. And I understand that pain is something awesome. It's an awful situation. It's an awful feeling. But to give God the glory in the midst of my pain, I'm going to thank him anyway. Because when I come out of this pain situation, I got a, I got a testimony to tell you. Because God says, uh, my word is true. What is that a pain if I'm going to gain God? What much pain would I suffer to gain eternal life? How much pain is going to take me to get to heaven? I can't live this life without going through something. I got to remember what God has already done. God has brought me out of a horrible pit. God has, God has saved my soul. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 48 and 10. I got to cut off here. I got to cut off. I got to cut off. Dave, I'm sorry. Give me a few more minutes here. Hallelujah. It says, behold, behold, I have refined it thee. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You think you were some of that old silver that they can just, when you go out to rub it, and, and it stay rusty all the time. No, God said, I'm refined at you. So you ain't got to go and rub it you no more to try to get a shine on you because God said, I've already brought you out. You are better than that. He said, but, he said, but the whole I have refined at thee, but not with silver. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. In the midst of your affliction, God said, yet I chose you. Because I know what I'm going to do for you when you come out. I know you have praised and gave me glory in despite of what you was going through. 
Praise be unto God. Second Corinthians 4, 4 chapter it said, For our light afflictions, our light afflictions, for our light afflictions, which is but for a what? But for a moment, working for a what? For a more exceedingly what? An eternal weight of glory. See, I'm looking for that day, see. These afflictions I'm going through, they yet light. These things, God, that we're going through right now, that ain't nothing but a nothing but a look at God and look at it and say, wait a minute, it's over with. These are just light afflictions. Uh, we ain't, our head has not been cut off uh, because we said the name of Jesus. Uh, we have not been persecuted because we yet say the name of Jesus. We have yet been able to get up and stand up and say, I thank God for his many blessings. Uh, you have not been put in prison uh, because you still can give God glory. I don't know why you don't give him glory, but even though by God say, for instance, hey, give me glory. Give me glory. In the midst of your affliction, you still can give me glory. These things you're going through, they're just light and just for a moment. But they are not what I'm about to do for you. Hallelujah. Why we look not at the outward things. We constantly looking at the outward part. But God said, I'm concerned about the inward part. First, Second Corinthians 4th chapter. I got to cut off, David. I'm sorry, I don't go there because I got to hurry and get out of here. Samuel, Samuel 2nd chapter, 30th chapter, 2nd Samuel. See, I'll read that about Samuel. I'll read about David. I'll read that what he said. David had to go out and fight a battle. Praise be unto God. 30th chapter of 2 Samuel. Say they go out and fight a battle with the Philistines. But in the process, you see, he was with them for a moment. But he had some people in the same mom that said, No, we know about this man, David. We know that once again he was against, he was against us. But now he's going to be with us. But that's okay. But they said, okay, David, no, you just go back home to where your family is. You go back to where your family, where you left for me. So when he went back home and to Ziglad and to different places, he found out when they got back there with his men, they found out that everything in their house had been burnt and everything had been taken away. But that's okay. That's all right. God said, I'm still not finished yet, David. See, I got you away from the enemy so I can get you blessed. See, we didn't stay, we want to stay with the enemy so long we can't see God doing in the blessings. See, we didn't got so comfortable setting where we're supposed to be at, even inside the church. We got certain seats we want to be at because we're comfortable there. But God said, if I can move you out of your comfortable zone, put you in a place where I can bless you at, you can see what I'm about to do. So God said, okay, David, I'm going to get you away from your enemy. I'm going to send you back home and see what they did while you had your back turned. See, when you don't pray, the devil going to come in. See, we don't keep a prayerful mind. The devil is going to sneak in through the back door. Praise be to God. So David went back home. I'm going to hurt and cut off here. David went back to the house and he found out everything was burnt up. All the men were killed. They did not kill any of the children, any of the wives. They took them all with them. But that's okay. That's all right. The men of God that were with David, they said, wait a minute, David. We got a little problem with you now. Because now our wives are no longer with us. But we went with you to fight a battle. But that's all right. That's okay. They said, well, David, we might want to stone you a little bit. But it's okay. David said, well, wait a minute. God said, I got my hand on all this. I don't care what they do to you at your job. God got his hand upon it. No care how they, what they fix up for you at your job. God said, I still got my hands upon it. See, I'm going to bring you out of here refined. I'm going to bring you out of here blessed more than you was at first. But David said, that's okay. I understand. But I know what I got to do. Yeah, I know they lost their wives. They lost their children. But that's okay. David had to go back and get in prayer and encourage himself. In the midst of the times you all going through, you need to encourage yourself. You need to get in the word of God and say, Lord, I need some encouragement. Lord, I need you to show me where the victory is uh, because I need a breakthrough. Hallelujah. I'm tired of going around this circle. The bishop told us, he said, it's going to be a turnaround at the midnight hour. You should have reached your midnight hour already. You need to get a turnaround in your life. You need to encourage yourself in the situation that you are presently in. Because God will give you a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day ain't every day. Every hour is not every hour. But I know what the Lord can and he will do. His word is sure. He said he's going to bring me out. He's going to bring me out. Hallelujah. 
He said, I encouraged myself. And then he asked the Lord one more question. I'm going to be done after this, Dave. He asked the Lord one more question. He, he said, should I go and pursue him or should I not? But since he had a relationship with God, God knew that it was his child. He said, go yet and pursue after him and you shall overtake him. Hallelujah. You can't pursue nothing if you're comfortable. Because the fact that you don't want to get out of your comfort zone. I woke up this morning, I was doing mighty fine. When I was sitting in my chair reading the word of God and all of a sudden my back started hurting. But let me tell you, saints of God, something, no back ache, no knee ache, no head ache, no foot ache, no eyesight problems. Whatever I got going on in my life uh, is not going to stop me from magnifying my God. I give God all the praise uh, and I give God all the purpose. I let God uh, be God. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. You got to put up now, shut up. And I thank God. Get past your fear, you're uncomfortable. I know you don't feel good, but God said, it's, I'm not designed this life for you to feel good because the prince of this world, he got a job to do too. But if you trusted me, you're going to see me in peace. Praise be unto God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Give God some praise. Oh, you can do better than that. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Take your eyes off your situation. Take your eyes off of what's going on. Give God some praise. If you want to see a breakthrough, give God some praise. If you want to be a broken out of whatever you're going through, give God some praise. You might not have anything you want, but give God some praise. You might have trouble on your job, but give God some praise. You might have trouble at your home, but give God some praise. You might have trouble with your children, but give God some praise. I don't care what you're going through or what it may look like. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God did not save us. To not praise him. He did not save us not to praise him. Praise be unto God. I thank God for the day, saints of God. I thank God for his word. It don't take long to hear from the Lord. When his train filled the temple, God would be in the midst. And there won't be room inside the temple. But I just know one thing for sure is this. When those doors in heaven are closed and no more can enter, I don't want to be left out. Get in while you got a chance. Get in while you got a chance. And as long as the church's doors are open, run in here as fast as you can because you don't know when they're trying to close it. God bless you. God bless you.